An entitled Karen tries to accuse my nephew of trying to steal my own car in my driveway. And I honestly could not be more upset. Here's what happened. First, a little bit of context beforehand. My sister has an adopted son by the name of Jason. He's one of the nicest kids I've ever met. And I am proud to call myself his uncle. While my sister and I are mixed, my dad being white, my nephew is dark skinned and looks nothing like us. And sadly enough, this will be important later. Now to mention my car, I own a 2020 Mazda MX-5 Miata. I managed to buy a brand new one thanks to being financially well off at the time. So this story takes place last summer. Jason was younger when this took place. My sister came to visit and brought Jason with her. At the time, Jason was outside on the porch talking to his friends and asked if it was cool if he could check out my car. I had no objection since I knew he'd be responsible and I could obviously trust him around it. Now, I wasn't here for this part since I was inside the house at the time, but my nephew you tells me while he was checking it out, this kid comes around and starts gawking at the car. He goes up to Jason and asked him about the car, but Jason doesn't know anything about cars. So he said that he didn't really know anything about it and told him to come back later when I was outside and maybe I could tell him about the car. The kid says, okay, and just runs off. This is where I come into the story. Since I heard what sounded like frantic pounding on my door, I opened it up and there stands the entitled Karen and her kid. She looks at me and says, Sir, is this your car in the driveway? I responded that yes, it is. She then says, Well, I caught this young man trying to steal it. And after she says this, she points right at Jason. And at this point, I started to realize what was happening. I looked at her and said, Oh, no, ma'am, I think you're misunderstanding. That's my nephew. He was just looking at my car. This Karen says in a slightly shocked but condescending tone, This is your nephew? I tell her that it is. And right around when she said this, my sister heard all the commotion and came up to see what was happening. My sister asked this lady, what's going on here? The entitled Karen then tried to imply that I was my sister's husband, but my sister kindly corrected her and said, no, this is my little brother. She looked over her shoulder and saw Jason looking at the ground. She then asked this entitled Karen, did my son do something to upset you? And at this point, I could practically see the Karen's eyeballs bulge out of her head. This Karen said, he's your son? That is impossible. You two look nothing alike. My sister then said, Well, my son is adopted. It's also good to note that my sister is not ashamed to admit that my nephew is adopted, and Jason is well aware that he is, but he simply doesn't care. They are all still family. This Karen then says something that absolutely blew my mind. She said, Well, this one must have come from a family of thugs. I swear, they all have something wrong with them. He's setting a bad example for my son. As a side note, this entitled Karen Karen's kid had no clue what was happening. And this is where my sister got incredibly angry. She then asked what she meant by that. And at this point, the entitled Karen doubled down, looked at Jason and said that he is a thug, stating that it's not her fault that they gave my sister a mistake of a child. And at this point, my sister and I were incredibly angry at this lady and began to berate her on how just because he's darker than us doesn't mean that he's not family and about how she's a prime example of why people of color still still have to watch their back, since apparently we can't do certain things because of how we look. The entitled Karen then began screaming back at us, threatening to call the cops, since we were all nothing but a bunch of thugs apparently. And after she said that, I recommended that we not do that, since I had a ring doorbell, and I assured her the police would love to see this footage. After she found out that I had a ring doorbell that was recording all of this, she ran off with her kid in tow. And honestly, I hope that entitled Karen never comes back. This entitled Karen Karen is actually a giant piece of garbage. There's no question about it. Sometimes there might be some ambiguity there, but this lady fits the bill completely. You have to be a sick and twisted person to actually try and pull something like this on someone else's property. I mean, these types of comments are so unbelievably toxic and very, very uncalled for, and they are not based in any objective reality in the slightest. This lady was just straight up racist. There's no other way to put it. And people who act like that just make me sick, and they should be ashamed of themselves. The original poster said that they are going to contact the police and use the ring footage as evidence. And I really hope something comes out of this because the way this entitled Karen was acting is completely inappropriate and no one should ever have to put up with that. I'm quitting my job and I'm sad because I was friends with my boss and now I simply don't know what to do. I put in my two weeks notice at work yesterday. This feels super dorky to write about, but I don't know who to talk to about this in real life without seeming dumb. About five years ago, I got a job as an 
assistant in the field I'm going to school for at a small family business. I was an assistant to one man and we grew very close. Over time, my skills progressed and I went to graduate school for the field I'm in. We had discussed it and I'd be leaving the job to go to school. We both were bummed about it as by that point, we'd grown to be good friends. He was almost like a second dad at that point. Although at times, I have suspected he harbors less than professional feelings towards me. The plan, tentatively, was that I'd come back and work there after school. My boss called me about a month into school and asked me to come back part-time. I needed the extra cash and enjoyed working with him. Things kept on with me part-time for two years. In that time, we grew even closer. I feel super goofy to write this out about my boss, but between spending so much time together and having so much in common, he grew to be one of my closest friends and he felt the same way towards me. Now, not all was rosy. My boss was a hard man to please. He was intensely particular about the way things were done, and sometimes his particularity seemed to follow no particular pattern. He grew frustrated with me, which I understand to an extent, but I was doing my best with what I had, and he had somewhat unreasonable expectations for me. I was expected to function on a level far beyond my training and experience, and when I fell short of that, my boss would get frustrated. He'd insult my intelligence and sometimes just be straight up mean. Over the past few months, the situation was deteriorating. He's grown mean and rude, and I'm not the only person to notice. He told me last month that he had changed his mind about hiring me as a professional after graduation, telling me that he wasn't sure I was cut out for the job, despite the fact that my co-workers, professors, and mentors disagree. He even cussed me out earlier this week. Yesterday, after getting belittled again, I decided I had had enough and put in my notice. It was so strange. When I met with him, I gave him my resignation letter, and he didn't react at all, just told me to put it on his desk and didn't even look at me. He then acted like nothing happened for the rest of the day. Frankly, he's in trouble without me, but I'm also scared I'm going to go to work Monday and get yelled at. I know it's for the best, but I cannot help but mourn the loss of one of the most peculiar but fulfilling friendships I've ever had. What should I do? It sounds like your boss's true colors were slowly coming out. The honeymoon period of someone being your friend as well as your boss is definitely over, and what you were seeing is, in my opinion, exactly how your boss actually is. And frankly, based on his reaction, this is probably not the first time this has happened. You are probably one of many people that he has done this to, which is why he didn't react at all, because he probably knew this was coming. It is not okay in a professional setting for someone to talk down to you like that and for you to have to sit there and take it. So I don't blame you for a second for putting in your two weeks notice and saying enough is enough, because I would have done the same thing if I was in your shoes. And you know what? If anything, you can at least use that place as a good point of reference where you can show people in the future that yes, I did work in this field before I graduated. That way you can at least advance your career. And if I was in your shoes, I really wouldn't waste my time trying to get any kind of reference from him. I would personally just look to like a coworker or someone like that and see if they could give me a reference instead of him because chances are he probably wouldn't give a good one since you're quitting. But hopefully you're able to move past this because I think you're going to find better friends and bosses who won't change their attitude all the sudden overnight and chew you out at the drop of a hat. That's not normal and you do not deserve that treatment. My boyfriend proposed to me in the worst way possible. My boyfriend of two years really, really wants to get married. He has told me many times that I am the love of his life and that he wants to spend the rest of his life with me. He wants to marry me as soon as possible too. I want to spend the rest of my life with him, but I'm too young to be married right now. I've told him this many, many times. We agreed to get married in 2025 because of it, but my boyfriend still wants to propose right away. I've known he was going to propose, and we have already picked out an engagement ring together. He's asked me how I wanted to be proposed to, and I told him in a romantic way with just the two of us. I don't want to be proposed to in public or just out of the blue at home while I'm studying or doing something like that. I know it's selfish to say, but I want my heart to pound with love during that moment. Well, since then, it seems like my boyfriend has ignored everything I said and wanted. He's asked me to marry him five times out of the blue at home, all while I'm doing chores or something like that. He doesn't go down on one knee or give me the ring. He just says suddenly, hey, want to get married? I've always said over and over again, I'm too young to be married right now. But if we got engaged, that would be good. But only if you ask me in a romantic way. And this is where the title to this story comes in. Yesterday, me and my boyfriend went to a Ren fair with our closest friends. And earlier that week, I had a gut feeling that he was going to try and propose again. So earlier that week, I I specifically told him over the phone, I don't want you to propose at the Ren Fair. Please don't do this. That isn't how I want it to go down. I hate being the center of attention. Well, as you could guess, 
address it. As we were regrouping and getting ready to leave, my boyfriend comes up to me and pulls out the ring and gets down on one knee. And he then asks me, in public surrounded by people, if I want to get married. I freak out and say, I'm too young and try to walk away. But my boyfriend would not take no for an answer. And he said back to me that we can still just be engaged. So I said fine and he puts the ring on my finger. Then all the people around us started clapping and I just wanted to disappear. And I still want to after thinking about this and replaying it in my head. Right away I told him that this isn't how I wanted it to go down. And I told him to please try again. Because I hate public proposals. Well, because of that, he took the ring back and he's been spiraling emotionally ever since. He is devastated and mad that I rejected him. And I honestly don't know what to do next. He hasn't talked to me since the Ren Fair, even though I have tried to talk to him about it, saying that I still love him and that he's not the problem. But every attempt to talk to him has just been ignored. What should I do next? I really don't know how to bring him out of this rut. Are my requests too much? What should I do? I don't think your requests are too much. You obviously want to try and get married to this guy, but you want him to do it in the way that you want it to happen. You specifically told him multiple times, I don't want a public proposal. I want this to be private, intimate, romantic. I want it to be just us. But he specifically did not listen. He took what you were saying and threw it out the window, which is completely unfair for you. And I think, if anything, this guy has revealed a very important part of himself. Not only can he not take no for an answer, but he also is absolutely going to ignore your wishes. Despite the fact that you told him multiple times that you did not want something. I mean, based on the way you're describing it, I don't think you could have made it any more clear that you don't want a public engagement. It's weird for you, it's embarrassing, and you don't like it. So I would not feel bad about rejecting him and saying, hey, you want to try this again? Because this isn't what you wanted. And that's a big red flag in my opinion. So I would take a good hard look at this relationship in my opinion, because based on the way he's acting, this does not look promising. My boyfriend overslept and missed a planned date again. This is the third time, and now I'm not sure what to do. My boyfriend of eight months has a history of oversleeping. The first two times he overslept and missed two dates. The first was just with me that we had planned two weeks in advance. And the second was a family hangout to meet my mom. Those two he was unemployed and was choosing to stay up all night knowing that we have plans the next day. Each time it hurt but each time I forgave him. We planned for him to come visit my house today. He is now working a night shift and I made sure it was during his off day not the day directly after his last day of work. That means that he's had a whole 24 hours beforehand to prepare himself for traveling to my house the next day. We live about two hours apart. My mom was looking forward to meeting him finally and so is my grandma. She has Alzheimer's and probably has only one year left to live. She has met him once and likes him a lot. She was so excited to see him. He promised to sleep early. He promised to set alarms. But already going into this, I was scared. I was psyching myself for the possibility that he wouldn't visit. I wake up this morning from a text at 7 in the morning saying he's only going to bed now. He said he's going to take a nap and try and wake up by 10.30. I already had a bad feeling but said I would try to call him to wake him up. 10.30 passes by and nothing. I ended up calling him 15 times within the space of two hours, hoping even just one call would wake him up. My dad then starts asking where he is and at this point I have to be honest and I tell him that he's still at home. My dad shakes his head as he's just simply disappointed. My mom says it's fine, but I can tell she's also disappointed. She had cooked an extra special lunch for him. I had bought food from a trip just to give to him. It was 12, and he could only stay at our place until 5pm to travel back. And now there's no chance he would have any time to come and visit. The hardest part about all of this was telling my grandma. She was looking for him the moment she saw him. So I had to tell her, while trying also not to cry, that he wasn't coming. The smile on her already aged gaunt face faded. She she looked so confused. She asked me again where he was, so I had to tell her again that he wasn't coming. She looked at my mom, and my mom repeated it again. It felt like a knife in my heart to see my grandma look so confused. Hours later, he messaged me saying sorry that he couldn't make it. I tell him honestly, but in a respectful way, that this is very upsetting to me. I told him that I felt that my family was disappointed, and I was feeling the same way. But his response was that he should be getting some leeway because because if he had gone today, that would mean that he would have a hard time sleeping for work. And I feel like it was just not the right response. It felt like he was more concerned about how it would affect him more than how it affected me. I do understand where he's coming from, but it still stings. At first I could accept it, but now I'm just crying. And I just feel like I can't look at him the same way. It's like a broken promise. And my family 
mean so much to me. My parents have never liked someone I've dated as much as they liked him. I'm scared this will affect the way that they see him. I feel so bad for my dad, as well as my mom and my grandma. I also feel so bad for me, and I also know it's hard on him too. I know the night shift isn't easy, but he promised, and this isn't the first time. How do I even proceed from here? I love him, but I can't handle another time when he doesn't show up. From now on, I don't know that I can ever trust that he'd come on time for anything. What should I do? It really does not seem like your boyfriend cares about you or your family. He had plenty of time to go to bed at a reasonable hour, but instead stayed up all night and only went to bed at 7? That's just unacceptable. If you have plans, you have to honor those plans, especially if you agree to them beforehand. This isn't a surprise. This isn't spur of the moment. You plan this in advance. And right now, he's not coming off as a good boyfriend, to be honest. This is unacceptable behavior. He should have been there on time. He had plenty of time to get sleep and be ready to be there. So in all actuality, it does not seem like he made you or your family his priority. And that's a massive red flag, especially since he keeps doing this. So I would take a good hard look at this relationship and see if this is even something you want to entertain. Because his negligence is only going to cause more friction later on. My husband always compares me to his friend's wife and calls her the ideal wife. And at this point, I don't know what to do. My husband and I just celebrated our 8th anniversary, but we have been together since we were both juniors in college. We also have a 4-year-old daughter together. After we graduated college, we moved to San Francisco because he was a computer science major and wanted to work in big tech, while I was an anthropology and English graduate and did teach for America. While I understand that my job isn't as lucrative as his, all those years we lived together before marriage, I always prided myself on paying all my personal expenses out of my own account and taking care of all the household logistics to make up for only paying one-fourth of the rent of our apartment. However, the man my husband was back then was supportive about my goals and didn't ever make me feel like we had to keep score about who contributed what or who was entitled to what as a result. I have great admiration for my husband and recognize that he is an extremely talented software engineer who came up from nothing. However, the way he has been acting recently has definitely made me question if this is still the same man that I married. My husband was working for a very large corporation and getting good raises, but a friend of his asked him to become a technical founder for a business idea, and at the time, I encouraged him. We moved to a pretty cramped apartment, went through our savings, and I defended him when people would say that all they really have is an idea. My husband and his partner were rejected by dozens upon dozens of investors. They had to let employees go because they couldn't afford salaries, and dealt with the fact that every business hopeful in town was basically willing to betray them to get ahead. At one point, his co-founder moved into our apartment because his wife was divorcing him, saying she was sick of him never having time for her. Finally, the business started taking off, and we had to put off marriage and kids because he said he wanted to be able to support a family. After that, he proposed, and I was happy to sign a prenup, especially since I assumed I would continue to work. Right before the birth of our daughter, however, his company decided to move their main headquarters to Tennessee, all of this being for business reasons. And so we moved out there. Right after the move, I gave birth, and that is when things really started to change. He was big in entrepreneurial circles there, and took up horseback riding and golfing. Through that, he started meeting new friends who were successful men in their late 30s. They were outwardly conservative but also lived the fast life. I do not like a lot of them because they would say really rude things about women sometimes and generally were pretty dismissive of others' feelings when push comes to shove. Around that time, his co-founder and probably the friend he spends the most time with, before and now decided he was sick of having short-term relationships and decided to get married this year. His wife is 23 years old and he is 41. And one month after having their son, she was back in a bikini looking better than she did pre-baby. Let's just call her Anna. That's not her real name. Anna stopped working when she began dating his friend and basically posts about how much she admires her husband every day. She also fights a lot of his battles for him, basically arguing with others on his behalf when her husband feels slighted and will blast these arguments onto social media. Whenever we socialize with them, I always catch him looking at them with a wistful look in his eyes before looking at me with a lot of scorn and resentment. He has been coming home late for the past year, and these late night disappearing acts have only increased. He will stink of booze when he finally lays down next to me. His comparisons of me and his friend's wife have now started in earnest. He will criticize my career, saying that being basically a librarian is boring, and that I don't earn enough money. Plus, he asked why I cannot be like his friend's wife, Anna, who just does secretarial work for free.
free for her husband and devotes her time to figuring out how he can make more money from his investments and such. He calls it my annoying work mom routine, even though I'm the one who does all the childcare and housework. He will complain that I cannot just drop everything at work to go on an impromptu two-hour workout with him because he usually can leave work whenever he wants. And whenever his friend wants to do something spontaneous, his wife Anna will drop everything to go with him. He has gone from an average build to working out all the time and decided to get Botox and veneers that he didn't need. He encouraged me to get filters and Botox to stop my eyebrows from raising, saying that even if I get too much, it is better than wrinkles and will wear off eventually. He got mad at me when I said I didn't want that, saying Anna knows a good doctor, works out every day, and got a tummy tuck. Whenever we fight, he goes straight for the jugular and will point out that his single friends are having a better life than he does. He tried to hold our prenup over my head, saying that we weren't at the 10-year mark, so I'd barely get anything. He calls Anna the ideal wife and wants to hire a nanny and a maid so I could be as energetic as her. All throughout this, he claimed to be a completely faithful husband, which I doubted. I read every midlife crisis book available because I tried everything. I planned date nights. I went on 5 a.m. workouts with him. I used up all my vacation time to be there for him. But my efforts were reciprocated with criticism. He would say I could not keep up with him, that I looked tired all the time, and all these other terrible things. Finally, I followed him and I caught him going to a scandalous club, if you know what I mean. His only explanation was that Anna lets her husband go to these types of clubs and does all other sorts of scandalous things with him. And he then tried to turn this conversation into convincing me that cheating was okay and that I should participate when he wants it. I am so disgusted with him and I consulted with a divorce lawyer. She looked over our prenup and says that in her experience, spouses sometimes use the 10-year clause to justify them nitpicking everything, basically making it so they can always ask the question of what have you done for me recently type of thing and that it will probably get worse since we are approaching 10 years and he may be thinking about whether or not to divorce me. She predicted that he would be a high-conflict ex but asked me if I thought he would try to divorce me before the 10 years are up. I honestly do not know, and I'm really afraid of what this would do to our daughter. I keep hoping this is a midlife crisis, and that he will apologize for it and just forget about it. But I am so miserable right now. We had such an ideal marriage, but now it's just falling apart. What should I do? This is a terrible situation for you and your daughter. You have a husband that has basically fallen off the deep end and decided to throw caution to the wind and basically ruin his marriage. I mean, what kind of husband would go to these scandalous clubs and then try and encourage his wife to start cheating, as well as basically saying, hey, you're not good enough. Like, this man is definitely a terrible person. I think talking to an attorney, as well as building up your assets that he can't get to would be really important. But hopefully everything can work out for you, because nobody should be married to someone who makes them feel this way. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.